YouTube, one of the key questions I get asked as a designer is how I texture my work. Now I approach this using three main methods and I'm gonna show you each one of them one by one. And I'm even gonna throw in some free textures for you at the end. So you can take your pieces from something like this to something like this. So let's jump straight in. Okay, moving into Photoshop here, this is the design we're gonna be using for the textures. And this is the before, very flat. And I'm gonna show you with the textures added, you can see how much of a huge difference this has made. Now I'm gonna be incorporating some burn textures here, as you can see, some scan lines, some film dust a little bit of noise and even a plastic overlay. Now all of these textures I'm gonna be using are gonna be included in the free asset pack in the description to download, so make sure to get them. Now they are 13 4K textures in there for you to use, so you can follow through how I use them in this video and apply them to your own designs. So let me get rid of these textures here, and I'm gonna walk you through how I've created this step by step. So the first texture I'm gonna be adding here is a burn texture, so I'm just gonna drag that in. Now the first step as always is just gonna to be to scale it and resize it how you like it. I'm gonna flip this one upside down so that the burners are going across the bottom of the piece and I'm just gonna resize this. There we go, so I like the placement about here. So first step is I'm gonna be looking at layer modes. Now this is always the first step in blending because it's the easiest and you can see so many different options of what you can create straight away. So I'm gonna come over to layer modes and I'm just gonna scroll through these until I see something that I think can work. Now from first glimpse, I think that lighten or lighter color works, they are effectively the same. So I'm gonna leave this on lighten. Then obviously you can play with the opacity, but for this example, I'm gonna be using this burn line as a line to mask with. So I'm not gonna turn the opacity down. See now, once you've got the layer mode selected of what you want to use, the second thing you can do is use the levels tab. Now this is gonna to help to balance the dark and light values in it so that they can shine through how you want it. So if you use Command and L on your keyboard, it's gonna open up this levels tab where you can see the dark, mid and high values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag these sliders and using these sliders, you can increase and decrease contrast as well as brightness to balance it how you like. So I'm gonna drag this in a little bit so it stays dark. Then I'm gonna grab this mid-tone slider and I'm gonna bring it towards the darks. Now you can play around with this for as long as you like, but you can see as you do this, more and less details will be revealed. So this is all trial and error, spend as long as you need on this. I'm gonna say about here is good for me for the moment. Now these are all adjustable. So if you come down to your layers panel, you can double click on this levels tab and adjust it again. Same with the layer modes. So if you make a mistake, do not worry. So now what I wanna do with this burn texture is I want to kind of mask it along the burn line so that this area of the angel is cut. So what I'm gonna do here is use the magic wand tool. So I'm gonna press W on my keyboard. I'm gonna make sure that the texture layer is selected. Now what I wanna do is highlight this burn line so that I can get the edges correct. See, now that's already quite good, but you can see that these small areas down here are still hidden. So if I hold shift and I try and select them, you're gonna see it's just gonna highlight the whole thing. So I'm just gonna get the lasso tool out and I'm gonna hold shift and just really roughly outline these areas that were missed. Now, the more time you spend on this, obviously the better the mask is gonna be. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna go over it really rough. And there we go. So now we've got the burn line adjusted. We just need to get the whole top area highlighted as well. So again, just gonna keep using the lasso tool, hold shift, and I'm just gonna make this selection. So let me just get the top half added in here. Now you can just bounce between the marquee tool and the lasso tool to highlight different areas. Do whatever you prefer. Okay, now with this whole texture highlighted, this is the area that we want revealed on the burn layer. So with this selection, I'm gonna hit the mask icon here. And then what I'm gonna do is hold Command and click on the mask, and I'm gonna apply that same mask to the image. So now you can see the angel cuts off below the burn layer, and we've got this really nice burn texture applying across the whole image. Now the second texture we're gonna add in here is another burn texture. See, now this one is slightly different because when I scanned it, I left no background, so you can see that there's white holes already made. Now this is really cool, it can almost look a little bit like bullet holes, so you can do a lot with this texture. And what I'm gonna do is just drag it up and up and up, and I'm gonna layer it above the first burn texture. Now from here, same steps again. Look through layer modes to start with, see if you can find what you want. Luckily, I've already found exactly what I want. This blends really well. And you can see this drop shadow is kind of already natural because of the way I've scanned it. It's the same here. You've got these nice burn textures all over. It's applying well behind the text there. So I'm just gonna keep this on lighten. And what I'm gonna do again, Command L to adjust my levels. Now from here, you can see, even if I just drag in this white slider, the texture changes completely. So just play around with these sliders to get the level that you want, bring the darks in, increase the contrast. Now I want this bottom area slightly different, so I'm gonna keep it where it is there. Maybe try and bring in the mid-tones. Now just play around with this until you get the selection that you want. Okay, so bringing in the third texture here, we've got this film dust texture. Now what's great about this is that because it is just light assets against a dark background, you can always just put this on lighter color and it will shine through exactly how you need it. So now already, let me just hide and reveal this to show you it. You can see these really nice kind of light specks brought in across the whole piece. Now the only issue is that you can see as I hide and reveal, it kind of adjusts the background texture here. 
So once again, Command L, open levels. Now play around with this to balance this. But as long as you bring in this white high end, you can see as I bring this in, more and more white texture gets revealed. So let me bring that in as much as I can and then bring the contrast back in so that all of the dark areas are still viewable in the background. There we go, I'm happy with it about there. You can see how much more film dust is coming through now that we've changed the levels. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. I'm gonna layer in another texture here, which is a scan line texture. So this is really cool. It creates these really nice horizontal lines across the piece. And again, follow the same steps. We're gonna use layer modes and we're gonna adjust this how we like it. Now to start with, as you scroll through, you might see something like this where you think, okay, yeah, it's a lost cause. We can't adjust that. But as long as you follow the same step of levels and blending, you can make anything work. So I'm gonna put this on overlay. So now with this on overlay, again, Command L, open levels, drag in these sliders and you can see the difference it's making. If you look at the actual peaks in the levels graph, you can see where the tones are valued. So if I bring in this mid-tone and I bring the darks in, you can see the closer I bring these together, the more detail is coming through on the piece. So I'm just gonna keep balancing these. I want the lines visible, but I don't want it too dark. Now this balance is all personal preference and what you're actually going for. But for me, for now, I think this is kind of just about where I want it. So I'm gonna call it good there, hit okay. And now the only thing now is that you can see these textures are kind of not really making sense right now because the scanner's applying across the whole thing. So I'm gonna grab this mask from the burn. So hold command click on that. And I'm gonna apply this to the scanner texture as well, just by hitting the mask icon. Again, I'm gonna repeat that. And you can, you can apply it to all the textures you want. So for example, these are only just applying to this top half now and the burnt area doesn't have anything on it. Okay, now another key when you're balancing textures is that you want the dark and the light areas to both be covered. So it doesn't look like it's just being hit on one area and not being hit on the other area. For example here, you can see this angel is quite well textured. The background has got lots of detail in it but this rust text here has barely anything on it. So what we're gonna be doing is using layer modes to adjust this and we can even use blending modes. So I'm gonna create a duplicate of this scanner layer. So I'm gonna use Command J to duplicate this and I'm gonna set the layer mode to exclusion. Now, automatically this looks very odd. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the levels tab by using clear smart filters. And now straight away, open levels back up again, use Command L and follow the same steps. But you can see the closer I bring this in, you can see that the text is almost quite gray. Now this is good because we want the light areas covered and not really anything else. So again, if I drag the midtones in, keep dragging in this right slider, eventually it's just gonna reply to the white text here. You can see now this is getting some texture shining through, which is great. So you just have to keep balancing these to get it to that point that you want. So now I'm gonna hit okay here. And you can see as I hide and reveal this layer, there's finally some texture actually getting added to this text. So now it's very coherent and it's applying across all colors. It looks a lot more genuine. Now we're gonna be wrapping these textures up with a plastic wrap. So I'm gonna drag this one in, hold option, make sure that it's filled to the same size as the canvas. And I'm gonna make sure that the top of the plastic wrap is at the top of the piece. Now again, this is a, a light texture shot on a dark background. So we can simply just put this on lighten or lighter color or linear dodge. These are all good layer modes to use for light textures. So here, I'm just gonna put it on lighten. Once again, levels, adjust this. So I'm gonna bring in this light value because I want these more visible than others. And you can see already the plastic is kind of revealing across the, the rest of the piece rather than just the top. So I'm gonna drag this midtones across, but I don't want it too light. So I'll drag the darks in. There we go, and I'm gonna balance it about there. Now my final step is texturing is adding noise. Now there's a few ways of doing this. You can combine all your layers and add noise to this layer, but it doesn't leave you many options to adjust it. So I'm gonna create a live noise overlay layer so you can apply it and drag it above and below different layers to make it blend well. So the first step is I'm gonna come in down to adjustments here and I'm gonna select solid color. Now for the hex code, I'm gonna type in 80, 80, 80. Now this is 50% gray. The reason I do this is because it's perfectly balanced between the darks and the lights. So when I hit okay on here, I'm now gonna come over and I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. Now to add the noise, we're gonna come up to filter and we're gonna to come to camera raw filter. So now if I come over to the effects panel on the right and click this drop down arrow, you can see grain here at the bottom. Now you're gonna hit this drop down arrow as well to give you the options. I'm gonna set my grain to 100 and I'm gonna set roughness to 100. You can even adjust the size of it here, which gives you a lot more options. I'm gonna keep it around 20 for the moment and then I'm gonna hit okay. Now with the noise applied to this layer, you can simply come onto your layer mode, select it on overlay. Now right now there's a lot of detail shining through. So again, repeat the same step with levels if you want to. You can just drop the opacity down a bit. I'm gonna put it to maybe about 80 and I'm also gonna drag it underneath the plastic layer so that it looks as if the whole piece is wrapped in that. So now if I hide and reveal this, you can see it just adds a little bit more detail across the whole piece. It works really well against gradient color. And there we go, these textures are really coming together now. Now the last thing I wanna do is I wanna create this burn texture down here. 
to be a white background similar to this. So I'm going to use this mask here. So I'm going to command click on the mask. I'm going to invert it and I'm going to create a layer just above this gradient map. And I'm just going to make it white. Now you can see that the texture is still shining through onto this white area, but not onto this white area. So it's simply just adjusting mask because I have masked these scanner copies out earlier. If I delete these, you can see now it comes back in. What you can do is if you don't want it the same value, I can duplicate this layer. I can select the mask and invert it. Now you can see it's just going to apply here, but this is going to be adjustable just on the white areas. So if I can drop the opacity down a bit here, so now there's still a bit of texture on it, but it doesn't look as if it's still all one piece. Now with this burn, I'm just going to add some final little adjustments, which is going to be a drop shadow. So if I go on effects down here and add a drop shadow, you can see it creates this really nice outline and it works perfectly with the burn texture and gives it a bit more depth. So you can just adjust this how you like. I'm going to make it quite shallow and I'm going to try and just kind of match this drop shadow around here that's naturally on the scan. And there we go now. So if I just collapse all of these layers, I'm just going to group these together and you can see if I hide and reveal this, you've gone from this really flat piece to adding all of this texture and detail and it creates so much depth in your design work. And that's just with three really simple methods. You've got layer modes, you've got levels and you've got noise. And there we go. If I zoom in here, you can see all of these really nice details on the texture. The great thing is they're all adjustable. You can come back, you can change all of the settings on them. It's not like if you make a mistake, then that's it. Remember, all of these are free to download. But yeah, that is the piece complete. As always, thank you so much for watching until the very end. I really do appreciate it and I hope you can find this useful. As promised, let me give you those 4K textures. Click the link down below in the description and it will take you to a Google Drive where you can download them for yourself. Now, I want to see what you do with these. So make sure to comment on my Instagram or on here. Send me your design and I'm going to check them out. But for now, subscribe. I'll see you again soon.